Hello everybody, my name is William and welcome back to another Roblox Bee Swarm Simulator video where today we are on episode 2 of BSS Renewed, uh, which is a series on my channel where I renew all of my outdated tutorials so that way I can keep you all up to date with the latest tips and uh, tricks to uh, get better items and get better at the game. That was a long intro, my bad. Alright, well, today what we're going to be doing is I'm going to show you guys how to get items and ingredients fast. An item as in like a crafted item like Red X extract blue extract that you can use to make like the diamond mask or the tide popper stuff like that if you enjoy this video be sure to subscribe and like that would help out the channel a lot and if you go to my channel you can find some non bee swarm simulator related videos please watch those i love making those and they're pretty funny and i think you'll enjoy them so uh yeah just let you know i do make non bee swarm related content so uh be sure to check that out also, turn on all post notifications so that way you get notified when I upload a non-BSS related video. Yeah, make sure you have post notifications set to all. All right, I've wasted enough of your time blabbering. Let's get into tip number one, which is crafting, uh, which you can craft things like red extract, blue extract, all the items that you really need to make stuff, like all the main ingredients to like the diamond mask are crafted inside the blender. But you don't always have to use the blender to get these items or craftables, as I call them. Why do I call them craftables? Is because they're a craftable item out of items that are not craftable. That voice crack was so disgusting. I am so sorry. Okay, but my point is, is see how there's strawberries? Strawberries you can't craft, so that is an ingredient. That is not a craftable. A red extract is crafted out of strawberries and royal jellies, so you can craft a red extract, which would be considered a craftable, if that makes sense. Okay, so those terms should help you understand this video a bit better, so tip number one is crafting items. Just saying. I think that's the most self-explanatory one out of all of them. Now, tip number two is bosses. What is a boss? A boss is something like the king beetle, the tunnel bear, your coconut crab. Like here, we're going to go to the tunnel bear layer here. This is how you get to the tunnel bear. I believe I've defeated the tunnel bear today. Yes, I have. There he is. Uh, well, you can't see him, but he was there was until i utterly obliterated him and now we're gonna go and head to the king beetle lair which i also obliterated uh they're not here anymore but uh, usually there will be a king beetle that spawns if you walk into there so yeah now going up to the 35 b zone we can find the coconut crab which is up here this is the coconut crab he's gonna spawn in there he is he's probably the hardest boss in the game um i would say because this one actually has a high chance of killing you so just to be aware of that and it takes a while to defeat but all of these bosses will drop you ingredients and craftable items also some like eggs and unobtainable items through crafting and other things so like coconut drinks are craftable so you can get from the coconut crab you can get a lot of coconut drinks so that is very useful you can also get oil glitter glue you can get like a lot of really good stuff from the coconut crab so be sure you're taking down your tunnel bear king beetle and coconut crab on to tip number three which which is questing and questing is very handy because bears or npcs will give you craftables and ingredients like let's get a quest from black bear here what you do is when they have an exclamation mark you go up to them talk to them they will give you a quest here see we have mountain pepper and coconut which i'm not going to do that because it's going to take way too long but i do have honeybees honey hunt finished it's not going to give me anything what am i talking about uh oh here we go i suppose i could do riley bee medley so we're going to go to the rose patch and we're going to complete the quest questing is done by completing the tasks on these little lists here when they turn green and like start like shifting colors like that from a light green to a dark green that means that task is completed and you have to complete every task on the list go back to the bear or npc turn in the quest and they shall give you some ingredients or craftables and usually it's actually both but yeah look at my sad red pollen collection this is a blue hive in a red field for you does not work there's no versatility in this game anymore there we go not for that Finally, this red pollen collecting nightmare is over. Um, but anyways, we're gonna turn in this quest right now, and, uh, here we go. There you go. We got one red extract. That was the worst quest I think I've ever gotten from the Riley Bee in my life. Jeez. Okay, well, yeah. We got ourselves one red extract. Usually questing, quests like that, they'll give you more, like, spirit bear. Do your spirit bear quests. Do your quest lines. Quest lines give you the most craftables, so make sure you're doing your quest lines. Tip number four, and that is planters. 
planters are these little pots that you can see in my inventory bar here. Here, I, la, 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 I can't speak English. I have two placed down. I have my blue clay planter planted in the pine tree forest. And I also have my pesticide planter planted inside of the spider field. And as you can see, there's a little percentage next to the name pesticide planter here. When that percentage hits 100%, you can collect the planter and it will drop you a bunch of craftables and ingredients or one or the other. It depends on how high the percentage is. You can collect the planter before the 100%, um, but the planter won't drop you as much nectar, um, which is this stuff, which I can make a video explaining nectar another time. Leave that in the comments below if you'd like to see that and also leave a like on the video. So you collect the planter. It's not at 100%, but as you can see, it'll drop me some items such as bitter berries, gumdrops, and yeah, sunflower seeds too. Now you may think that's terrible, William. That's who, who would who would use that? Well, obviously it wasn't at 100%. And another thing to note is that different planters will drop you different rewards. Like if we planted, geez, I'm making a lot of like red examples in this video here. If we planted our red clay planter here in the pepper patch and then collected it when it's at 100%, it will drop us some red oriented items like craftables and ingredients, red extract and stuff. On screen now, I will put up a chart of the planters and what they will drop you at 100%. Um, on screen now, you can pause the video if you'd like to see that and it will also show you what the best fields um, to plant the planter in are. So this is a very useful chart that I've been using for a while. I have no idea who made it. I well actually, I haven't seen the chart in a while. Let me take a look. Ah, uh, yes. Thank you, O zero O mega hashtag O four O four. Thank you for making this chart. I sorry, I haven't looked at this chart in a long time. I quit Bee Swarm Simulator a while ago. I'm just making these updated guides for you all, just to let you know. Tip number five, and that is mob runs. A mob run is when you go across the whole map and take down all the mobs. A mob is like a bug. Like if we go to the cactus patch over here, we will have the werewolf spawning. The werewolf is considered a mob, and when you take down the werewolf it should give you some items like here we go we got tickets and sunflower seeds geez my luck is really bad we have our baby love going so we have better loot luck let's see if we get any good items oh yes we did we got pineapples and blueberries so we're gonna go ahead and pick those up from those mobs um but running across the whole map and taking down every mob um increases your chance of getting good items like craftables like even the small bugs like a ladybug could drop you a red extract which is very rare but it's possible if you just keep doing that repeatedly you can get a lot of useful items tip number six and this goes with tip number five tip number six is macros and if you don't know what a macro is i explain it in this video in the top right hand corner if you click there you can go ahead and watch my macro explaining video you might want to watch till the end of this video before you go and watch that one just a quick summary a macro is a record Recorded like sequence of keystrokes, which are like button presses on your computer. Like it records what you're pressing on your computer and you can play it back onto your computer an infinite number of times and your game will pretty much play itself. Like you'll have your computer playing the video game for you so you don't have to do that. So why that's useful is because you can make it do mob runs for you and you can let it do it for hours on end and you don't have to touch your computer at all. You can go outside and actually live life rather than being stuck at your computer to do doing mob runs repeatedly. So you can get a load of craftables ingredients from that. Um, but another thing about macros is you can macro in fields. Like if I macroed inside of the pine tree forest where I just spin around and collect a load of pollen and then go back to my hive and convert, I can get a lot of honey very quickly. And that's another thing. That's how all the top players are doing it is they're macroing. No one actually is playing the game. They're all having their computer play the game for them pretty much. Well, all the top players anyways. And this is useful to get you blue blueberries if you're in the pine tree forest macroing you can get like 5,000 blueberries in about eight hours give or take you know 4,600 to 5,500 depends on luck and like it's you get the point right you can get a bunch of blueberries from there a bunch of strawberries if you macro in like the rose field or well not the rose field the strawberry field uh you can get a bunch of strawberries actually you can get 5,000 in about eight hours sunflower field gets your sunflower seeds pineapple patch gets your pineapples if that makes any sense yeah you can either macro fields or you can do bug runs if you're going for ingredients i highly suggest you go for bug runs if you're doing like a wide variety of ingredients but if you need to focus on one simple ingredient like a say a blue extract i'd suggest you macro in a field because you can get blue extract a lot quicker
quicker from just crafting them out of the blueberries and some royal jelly. It will cost you some honey, but it will be... You can make the honey back from the macro. You see why that's so absolutely insane? So yeah, macros are amazing. Tip number seven, and this one is very simple. This is planters. This is another way you can get ingredients such as blueberries, strawberries, pineapples, and sunflower seeds, and some craftables, but it's a bit rarer to get a craftable from a route or a, you know, magic bean, or whichever term you want to use for it. They're called magic beans, but everyone calls them sprouts because that's the other name on it has two names for them. The magic bean is the seed, and the sprout is what grows from the seed. We can plant one down there. What you do is you collect the pollen that it says, the big number on the sprout. That broke really quickly, but hopefully you could see it. Um, you break that number, like you collect that much pollen from the field, and the sprout will pop into a bunch of rewards here. See how there's like a load of strawberries in this field all of a sudden? That's not normal. That's caused by the sprout. The sprout is giving us just a ton of strawberries and it's super useful. So that's what a sprout does. I suggest if you want strawberries, plant your sprouts inside the strawberry field. If you want pineapples, pineapple patch, sunflower seeds, the sunflower field. And for blueberries, I do suggest the stump field. And why is because the stump field is a small field where you can run around quicker and collect all the items a lot faster and it's easier to get to. So yeah, but if your stump snail isn't defeated, go do them in the pine tree forest because that's also a good field to do in never do it in the bamboo or the you know, or the blue flower field those fields are really long and you won't like have the speed to run to each side of the field and collect all the items another cool thing about sprouts is you can do these things called sprout parties where you're with like a bunch of other people and you combine a bunch of sprouts like see how i have 1200 sprouts imagine five people with 1200 sprouts you'll be doing that for a very long time you can get a lot and i mean a lot of treats quickly treats ingredients craftables all the same just make sure you're not doing too many because sometimes you can lag the game pretty badly so i do suggest take it slowly and do a server reset every now and then tip number eight puff shrooms now this one is a bit of a newer concept to the game just like planters these, these came out in the same update as planters a puff shroom is this mushroom looking thing and they spawn in five minutes so i guess i'll wait five minutes till they spawn and i can show you what puff shrooms are they're like a mushroom that spawns in the field like when you collect the pollen around them they will pop into multiple puff shrooms and float over to other fields like let's say there's one in the pumpkin patch then if you pop it it'll have a chance of floating over to like the cactus patch or even the mountaintop patch and you can go over there collect it and they have a chance of multiplying into like two and so now you have two puff shrooms popping around at the different fields they can go into any field they want and what will happen is when you pop the puff room depending on the rarity you can get good items you can get bad items you can get a lot of wax really quickly uh wax is very useful for crafting items wax is a fairly new thing so wax is a bit confusing but i can make a video on that too if you guys want but yeah that's what a puff shroom is on second thought i'm not going to be able to wait till a puff shroom spawns to show you guys even though it's three minutes but i do have to go somewhere today so i want to finish up this video as quickly as possible so i can get it out today for you guys so i don't miss another day because i'm trying to do daily uploads hopefully you understand what a puff shroom is and you can find them they're little mushrooms in the fields they spawn at like 1.45 in the afternoon or 2.45 in the afternoon, 3.45 in the afternoon. There's a puff shroom that naturally spawns. You get the point. You can also spawn them in by using ticket planters, which I don't suggest because there's a limited amount of those, I think. Uh, here they are. Yeah, ticket planters. There's a limited amount of these. I don't think I've ever used that many. Um, but you wait until it is at 100% and then you collect the ticket planter. Don't do it before then. Only do it when the ticket planter is at 100%. And also other planters have a small chance of being able to spawn pop shrooms at 100%. You can tell because there will be this massive fart cloud around the planter. Steam coming off of it. It's just, it's warm and gross. I'm sorry if you're eating food while watching this video. Tip number nine, and that is memory matches, because I'm just going to pretend that we did not have a conversation about poo about puff shrooms and fungus mushrooms. So here we are, the memory match. We can go ahead and press E and we can do a memory match. There are four memory matches in the game and I will show you which ones are which after I show you what in the world it is. So you can get some more chances. Here's your chances and you get more chances depending on the badges it requires you to receive to like unlock new chances, if that makes any sense. So you have to get the spider badged grandmaster to get another chance. Um, What a chance is, you can use a chance by guessing two items. I failed that. So it uses a chance even when you succeed it still uses a chance so we're gonna go ahead and get ourselves three oils see that really easy you can get three craftables for just 25 million honey and you can sometimes get some really useful stuff like look boom 25 royal jellies you can get star jellies from stuff like this as you can see these are the items that you can get the 
items do change. They're randomized, so be aware of that. Okay, so there's one memory match by Spirit Bear. There's another memory match in the badge shop. Um, it's the mediocre one, the middle middle class Beast Swarm player, I guess. That will have mid tier rewards. And then here we have by this shop in the 10B zone, the noob memory match will give you the worst rewards, but it's always nice to do that because you can get some craftables and ingredients. And for mid game, it's always good to get everything you can. And here we are in the 30B zone. There's a hidden memory match all the way up there. It is called the nighttime memory match. And it's like in between the mediocre, the mediocre memory match and the spirit bear memory match. So to get there, you have to do this moon parkour, but it's only active at night. See how there are moon charm crystal looking things here. If you step on them while they're transparent, you fall through them. But at night, they're solid. And when they're solid, you can jump across them, get up to the nighttime memory match, and you can do the night memory match and it will give you some really good rewards. So I do suggest you do all your memory matches. Moving on to tip number 10, and that is the Windy Bee. The Windy Bee, you can go ahead, go up to the 35B zone and the Wind Shrine right there. You can donate either a Glitter or a Star Jelly. Both will spawn a Windy Bee. They'll have a high chance of spawning the Windy Bee, but they're not guaranteed. You can get winds from it. So here we go. The Windy Bee. Yeah, okay. I got it this time. I got a Windy Bee in a field somewhere here. He will be in a little cloud, hiding in a cloud inside of a field. See how there's a Windy Bee inside this cloud right here? We're going to touch the cloud and the Windy Bee spawned in. And now we have to defeat the Windy Bee, which will be very easy for me. But for some other people, it might be a bit more difficult. But I'm in the more end game side, so it's really easy for me to defeat the Windy Bee. And see how it drops you a bunch of rewards like tickets and sunflower seeds? Well, there are chances of getting craftables like glitter even from the uh, Windy Bee. You can also get star jelly, which is pretty cool, and you can get a load of tickets. So I do suggest you do your Windy Bee for getting some extra craftables and extra ingredients. Windy Bees are more of a group thing. The more damage you deal to the Windy Bee, though, out of a group, um, the more rewards you get. See, look at this. I'm getting a bunch of rewards because I'm doing it by myself, and I'm doing it quick. The quicker you do it, the more rewards you get as well. So be aware of that. There is a time limit, and the time limit does not reset. Once you spawn the Windy Bee, the time has started. It lasts five minutes, and yeah, the Windy Bee gets gradually higher in level every time you defeat it. So the next one should be level eight. And the higher the level the Windy Bee, also the higher rewards you get. Um, but just a warning, don't do your Windy Bees within 24 hours of each other because thing about it is you get more rewards if you wait 24 hours to do the next Windy Bee. So yeah, make sure you're taking down your Windy Bee. And here we have it, the final tip, tip number 11, and that is take down your Stump Snail because you can get a bunch of glue. Your Stump Snail will have a lot of HP. Just a what, what the? What the heck? What? Why is he in the ground? Whoa, that's never happened. Wait, 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 wait. Is it stuck down there? Oh, no, it's not. Okay, for, for a minute. It. That was the weirdest thing I've ever seen. Here we go. Big fat snail thing. You can defeat this and they have millions of HP. I believe the HP starts at 30 million. And uh, yeah, you have to defeat the stump snail and it will give you possibly a stump snail amulet. Pretty sure it's guaranteed every time. Um, but you get a stump snail amulet, which is useful because it will give you some buffs, as you can see here. And you can get some ingredients and craftables from the stump snail that are pretty good. You can get eggs like a mythic egg or a gifted diamond egg, which I believe I've gotten a gifted diamond egg from the stump snail before. Um, so yeah. Oh, here's a puff shroom. See, right before it despawns. Look at that. There you go. I, I did get the showcase at one time and it pops back into the same field. But see, there's two now and they're popping up. Oh, there's three. Um, but yeah, they pop into different fields. Okay. Uh, falling off track. Stump Snail gives you rewards. Defeat your Stump Snail. I hope you all found this video helpful. Do not forget to leave a like and subscribe. And I will see you all in the next non bee swarm related content that I make or the next BSS renewed episode. So stay tuned for that. Goodbye.